into the replay? Or... I am. Okie dokie. Then let me double check that I've got. Okay. I'm loading in right now. Uh, I'll run through super duper fast uh, intro after your countdown, and then uh, yeah, you can start the countdown whenever. Okay. Three, two, one, go. And all right, go. All right. And we're into some more competitive Age of Empires 2 action. For those of you just tuning in, my name is Resonance22, and I'm going to be casting with Zero Empires today as part of the Regicide uh, Escape Gaming Masters Tournament. This is going to be a 1v1 mirror match between Doubt and GKT Cloud. Both players will be playing as the Franks today, and the map is Hillfort. That is right, and although we just saw Hillfort a moment ago, uh, we're seeing it again now with a twist. This time there are no stone walls, but palisade walls. I, no. <laughs> I think it's just a, a random uh, thing. Sometimes you get wood, sometimes you get stone. Who knows? Uh, but it certainly does change the dynamic a little bit, because obviously palisade walls are significantly weaker than stone walls. Um, we'll see if that actually takes effect this game or not. Uh, but anyway, Doubt will be in the blue to the southeast, playing as the Franks, and to the northwest in the teal is Cloud, uh, the player who lost his first game to the Viper, knocked out Jordan, and now comes up against Doubt here in his third match of the tournament today. Hmm, Zach, my cheese senses are tingling. I'm expecting a short degenerate game here, and I don't know why, but... Something is amiss. Cloud, taking advantage of the fact this is Regicide, which means, remember everybody, you have a king who runs really fast, he's very fat, he has excellent eyesight, if he dies, he loses the game. But you also start with 500 food, 500 uh, wood, which mm -hmm. means you can go for hilariously fast feudal age timing if you have huge balls. And it looks like Cloud does, with four on stone, like a minute in the game, going up to the feudal age on 13 villagers, sending five forward. <laughs> this man's lost his mind. <laughs> this is this is brilliant. This is so brilliant because it, it's kind of like everyone's nicknaming this guy King Cloud. Like he took down Jordan earlier. Can he take down Doubt? If he took down Doubt right now, I mean that would just be something else. Let's see. I mean this is really a smart play. It, it's only a palisade wall. A tower here would certainly uh, break through. And I, I mean I was just saying this a second ago. It certainly could open the door to some shenanigans. Shenanigans it will be. Can Doubt it, stop this? Well, no. How does he build a tower to defend? He's so far it, from the feudal age. This is going to be two de facto break the meta episodes in a row. Am I going to see a tower hop here? Okay, no, he's not He's not that bold. But he is going to go for a watchtower rush with five villagers. I mean, this is even better if you're the Franks, by the way, because they get that extra HP on their scout. 20% mm -hmm. extra going from 45 to 54. And with the palisade walls being the choice of, of just map generation... This means that Doubt's in deep trouble. And on Hillfort, you don't have a castle for some reason or even a watchtower to hide your king in. <laughs> I don't know how he's going to respond to this. He's going to try and mine some stone. Thankfully, the drop distance isn't that far. But villagers, they've got an attack bonus versus buildings. Be able to chip through those popsicle stick walls. What an aggressive play from Cloud. Yeah, he's starting to batter down that wall. A couple of villas in the tower, three attacking the wall piece, and Scout coming over as well. Doubt reacting quite the way I expected, which is just a wall behind this and buy himself some time. But he may lose access to his main stone if Cloud can start building that uh, second tower before Doubt gets to the feudal age. Doubt cannot build a tower until he reaches feudal. All he can do for now is try and stockpile as much stone as he possibly can, but it won't be enough. He'll be able to make one tower, and that's... Maybe if he gets enough stone, he can make another one. But uh, Cloud's tower is coming up fast, and that's going to be denying the main stone from Doubt. From there, where does he go? Where does he go get stone from there? There's there's a so stone mine to the front, but that's not very accessible at all. Sometimes people complain the competitive Age of Empires 2 is too slow, but I would say that as a caster, it's way too fast. There are so many things I want to talk about here. One, 150 starting stone on Regicide instead of 200 means that defending against a tower rush is a lot more difficult because it's a lot harder to get up a secondary tower. In addition to that, you start with no gold, so you don't have loom, and Doubt doesn't have loom, oh. so he's getting pressured really hard, and Cloud busted down that wall as fast as humanly possible by maximizing his DPS. Small little trick, you can only saturate that wall piece with three villagers, so if you want to maximize your DPS, put two villagers in the watchtower, then focus fire down that wall piece. Cloud is executing this tower rush immaculately well. What can Doubt do? 
Maybe put down a stable, get out a scout with an additional 9 HP? Yeah, I, I feel like maybe Cloud could have gone in on this left side, but there you go, the tower's up. Doubt's gonna lose the villager. Ooh. He's pushed off of his um, main no wood loop. line. Doubt fortunately has got enough wood to build another lumber camp at the back. That's probably the safest place to do it. He's also going to get loom right now since he's started to gather some gold, but it's taken him a while. And uh, what a messy, messy start for Doubt. This is going to be looking good for Cloud as things start to progress forward. Uh, Cloud, bear in mind though, is behind in villagers right now. Uh, he's just equalized, but he has sent these villagers forward. And if the, he can't deal a finishing blow, then he may not be able to get enough value out of this tower rush to make it worthwhile. But so far, I'd say it's looking good for him. Age of Empires 2 is a game of strategic trade-offs. And like you say, he has absolutely no defense at home. He's got no economy either. And he has no real military units. This is a static offense for him and a huge all-in investment from Cloud. Somebody call Scission, by the way. The reduced <laughs> HP on these buildings is really paying dividends for Cloud's aggressive build. And I don't think I've seen a player abuse the villager attack bonus versus buildings like this, let alone without loom. But this strat is so strong on regicide because of the no loom, the reduced stone, the fact you can get to the feudal age super quick. Hill fort, you have palisade walls this time and not stone walls. I think Doubt's reacting correctly by segmenting his base like he's doing. But what do you think about these scouts? I think it's a good call. I mean, obviously Cloud doesn't have Loom yet. He is going to Loom now. But we know that these scouts are good um, or better because they have the extra health, right? Um, he could at least run the villagers away or make them go into the towers. He can try and catch them when they try and return to Cloud's side of the map. Um, but Cloud so far, I mean, look at the mess that he's created. Doubt has very little food income. Um, he's actually coming out to the left side to mill these berries since Franks now do gather from berries faster. So these extra berry bushes over here are going to be helping him out a little bit. But uh, the food income is, is abysmal and, and Doubt's... A long way from being able to, to really get into a position where food income is stable again. Um, Cloud actually retreating away now with the Vils. I, I think maybe he's had enough. I don't know. What's, what's the plan for Cloud here even? I'm not sure, but I like that you do point out the plus 25% foraging bonus that the Franks have. I mean, Doubt's just not in a position where he can actually stabilize his own economy by building some farms because he needs all these villagers in the defense. He's even mining some gold. Me me thinks that there could be some market shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Oh, he's even building a second mill. What the hell am I watching? He, I, I, this is a competitive Age of Empires 2 game where there is where Doubt is getting out cheesed by another player, and he is forced to build three mills in the corner of the map. Long distance mills. No one ever mills those extra bushes. But I think it's the correct play, and I love the scouts here. Can he pick those villagers off? Because they're. These towers aren't properly daisy chained. Those villagers could die. I think you'll get them. Um, one of the scouts <gasps> will go down, but the villagers are getting very what? low. Doubt just trying to get up to the hill and get into range of his watchtower here. Those villagers are going to be fodder. Uh, they're all going down, and that's going to set Cloud back a long way. Doubt reacting very nicely here. And I think part of the reason why he did go for the mills over here, not only does he get the bonus, of course, but he also has the scouts to protect them. Sc Cloud yes. losing five vills, that is not nice. He's now behind by eight villagers overall. And this cheese strat, this this aggression has kind of backfired on him. I mean, this was one of the most well-executed, clever tower rush cheese strategies I've seen in Age of Empires 2. It just works so well here. And Cloud did it very, like, almost perfectly. But he got a little bit too aggressive, not completely daisy chaining his towers because they do a minimum range. You need a, village, a place where your villagers to actually hide in. When he went for that tower on the right side to try and pressure that gold, leaving himself wide open for Doubt Scouts. What a great play uh, on, as well on Doubt's part to actually read the situation, go for the scouts in the first place. And also, Cloud has no idea where most of Doubt's economy is. Can't drop towers on him if you can't see him. He's foraging in the corner. You can't cheese the master. <laughs> yeah, you certainly wouldn't expect him to be milling these berries like at this stage of the game. Like, you wouldn't expect him to mill them at any stage of the game, really. And there, yeah. there, and there you go. He's got three mills, defying all logic. But no, he's actually on the way up to the castle age right now. He did build the market. He did buy some resources there. And he's now up to castle. I, I think 
the castle age for doubt basically seals the deal for me um he should be able to get oh, some wow. stone he should be able to get a second tc and cloud meanwhile is just trying to get his eco into a, a decent position behind his walls because he cannot leave his walls right now oh man to say a tower rush is a double-edged sword is the understatement of the century cloud has no defense of his own and now he is regretting the Palisade Walls, those flimsy Popsicle Sticks defenses that he was abusing in the early game. Cloud doesn't even know, by the way, that there are three sets of berry bushes there. He only knew that there was one, so that he has even less reason to suspect that Doubt would be crazily just foraging in the corner over there. I mean, this but, is but seriously, this is nuts. This is too, like, this but, is crazy. Seriously, what's going on with those forage bushes? Just take a look at the rest of the map. Yeah. There's one forage bush to the north. <laughs> And then in this <laughs> southern corner, the six or five. What's what I is mean, that about? Oh yeah, yeah. There, there are even two more pairs. Yeah. What is this? That's absolutely <laughs> absurd. And in a Frank's mirror match, nonetheless, these are some of the weirdest games that Age of Empires two have cast in a long time. And I just, I have to say, I love how Doubt's responding to this. I knew that he. God, this is how you defend against one of the most degenerate tower rushes I have <laughs> ever seen. So fast is you have to go really hard on gold which we saw him doing earlier. That way you can build a market and kind of cheat your way to the Castle Age. And once you get to the Castle Age, you have access to siege weapons. You have access to knights. You can close out the game while the player that invested so much of his own economy and four villagers in that tower rush will be nowhere near the Castle Age. But Cloud, not born yesterday, not with those wrinkles, knows that he also needs to use the market if he wants to win the game. And he's getting closer to being able to afford it. But I think Doubt's got a window of opportunity. Absolutely. I mean, he hasn't even clicked up to the Castle Age yet, and Doubt is already there. Uh, Doubt's also building a siege workshop down here on the south side, maybe going to try and break through those walls uh, with some siege there, or maybe get a Manganel perhaps to uh, to pressure from outside. But yeah, it's I, I didn't expect the game to go quite like this. You know, after the last game, thinking like, oh, that was a pretty interesting game with the with the stone walls and that, uh, and then suddenly Palisade yeah. walls, and you've got a completely different game on your hands. It's it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, Doubt going to back up the siege or protect the siege with some knights, continuing to be a nuisance with the scouts, and, and Cloud is, it's kind of like a classic starvation tactic almost. I mean, he cannot leave his walls, and he will eventually run out of wood in there. He will eventually run out of resources in there. I think it speaks volume of how good both of these players are, that they are adapting to the situation. That's what Age of Empires 2 is all about, and that's what Break the Meta is all about, is reading these weird situations and actually reacting accordingly. Doubt's playbook has been immaculate here, and so has Clouds, with some great building placement, managing to actually keep himself in the game, managing to hold the line as he is you know, inching his way to the Castle Age. He's almost halfway there. But Doubt wants to close out the game as fast as possible with the Siege Workshop. He is at an elevation disadvantage, but with those knights on the field, these Palisade walls will not hold. And there you have it. Cloud calling the GG. He's not in the Castle Age. He's not clicked up. He's got wow. no way to defend from this anymore. And uh, what a nice attempt from Cloud there to, to try something different. You know, kind of think outside of the box. Try and break the meta game a little bit. And uh, that he certainly tried. Unfortunately for Cloud, it didn't work out. But I want to give credit to this guy because he's come into the tournament and I think he's made a name for himself today. I think people are starting to say, hey, who's Cloud? Absolutely. Cloud has put on one very, very impressive performance. And even though he didn't win this game, I can't stress enough how brilliant this build actually was. And there was only that crucial turning point where one, I guess Doubt has... Not only is he the master of all cheese, but I guess he's been he's seen everything now. So at this point, he, he somehow responded to it really, really well. And Cloud, going on the right side, just a little too aggressive with that one tower, gave Doubt that window of opportunity. And I can't believe it, but there were decisive sets of forage bushes in the corner. Yeah, that was ridiculous, really. But again, a, an adaptation. I mean, who does that? Nobody does that. Nobody goes and builds three mills and takes the berries. Doubt does that because he realizes that that's actually a smart thing to do in this situation. I, I think, would he have done that if he wasn't the Franks? I think he probably would, actually. Uh -huh. I think yeah, he probably maybe, yeah. would because it, it did make sense in that moment. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting to me. Um, 
that the map does influence things a lot, but it's not the map that decides things. It's how the players use the map, uh, which really exactly. changes a lot there. So uh, there you go. Doubt will go forward. We'll take a quick look at the bracket now so you can see what tomorrow's lineup looks like. Cloud will be eliminated just there. Tato versus Viper will be a best of three tomorrow, our first game. We'll then have uh, losers round three, MBL versus Doubt. Those are the four remaining players. Eight players entered today, four now remain, and tomorrow we will crown a champion for the registered edition of Escape Gaming Masters. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, Rez, for, uh, for being here today. Uh, much appreciated, and uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and throw a host over to you now as well. Which I really appreciate, Zach. Thank you so much for inviting me today, as well as offering to host my channel. It's always a pleasure co-casting with you. I think that we're, you know, I love. I think we have great synergy, and people always give us positive feedback. So again, let us know what you think, everybody, about our our casting. I'd love to do more, and make sure that you follow Escape AOE because tomorrow is going to be the finals, and I'm going to go yep. start up my stream in a moment. So these are some great games. Real pleasure casting you today. Uh, GGs. Yeah, absolutely. So 15 GMT tomorrow, guys. Don't forget, same place, same time. And we'll have the conclusion of our event. Uh, the winner will take $550. Second place will get 